Okay, so in continuing with the series of content we've been creating around software that everyone should have on their PC, we're gonna talk about one that's been around for quite a while. Uh, it's by O&O, &O, and it's called Shut Up 10 Plus Plus. And basically, what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow you to turn off all of that annoying spyware telemetry data that Windows is collecting. You know that when you first install Windows and there's a few checkboxes you can turn off saying, I don't want you to collect all my stuff. Well, guess what? They pretty much ignore that no matter what you do, and they still collect all your crap. So today, we're gonna show you quick easy and free way to basically give Windows two middle fingers. For those looking for a high-end custom gaming experience, look no further than Falcon Northwest. Falcon Northwest has been building PCs made for gamers for over 30 years with a focus on a true high-end gaming experience. Custom cases available only through Falcon Northwest feature state-of-the-art testing and design to ensure that every component is performing at their best through thermal imaging and rigorous lab testing designed and overseen by the Falcon Northwest founder himself. With a complete lineup of systems ranging from small to large, every Falcon Northwest system includes a three-year warranty policy and a year of two-way overnight shipping coverage providing the ultimate peace of mind. To see all that Falcon Northwest has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below. You guys know I'm terrible at that, but it's pretty simple. Just look up on Google or whatever search engine you use, shut up 10 plus plus. It basically turns all of those dip switches in Windows specifically regarding data collection uh, and anti-privacy or privacy type of, of um, built-in features in Windows into a simple on-off switch when it comes to whether or not you want to have that feature enabled in Windows. The cool thing is, um, You've got kind of like, right now, this is everything that is on or off within these settings in Windows. And I just wanna explain something real quick right here. So off is on, if that makes sense. So turning off the privacy feature in Shut Up 10 Plus Plus means the feature is enabled for Windows. So if you turn, let's say right now, disable and reset advertising ID and info, they also give you this recommendation here on the right on whether or not they recommend it being on or off. If you turn on the dip switch, you now get this notice that says they highly recommend that you create a restore point. And the reason for that is that it is going in and making changes to your OS. And anytime you start messing around with any of that, it can't possibly account for every permeation that exists in people's Windows installs, versions, third-party software that might be accessing registry and such. So it's very recommended that you create a system restore point at the point of uh, the first time you modify any of this. So I would say yes, it only takes a few seconds, which it did in this instance here, where now we have turned on privacy for disable and reset advertising ID and info. Now, if you wanna know what any of these do, if you hover over it, you see you get the little question mark. If you just click it, it tells you exactly what it is. So in this instance, it says, Windows creates a commercial ID to show you advertisements based on your installed and used apps and your browsing history. These advertisements can also be displayed in non-Microsoft apps. Guess what? That means shared information. That means sold information. So Windows, as everyone knows, is constantly evaluating your behavior, seeing what websites you go to, seeing what your interests are, and then targeting advertisements towards you and selling that information to other third parties that share with Microsoft um, logins and such, or even non-logins. They could even sell that information to other third parties, which then sell it to other first parties then to start advertising it to you. It's one of the ways like, have you ever looked up something on your computer and then suddenly like, Amazon is now suddenly suggesting it to you on a completely different device. Every single one of these companies are in cahoots with each other because they found it's actually more viable and profitable to sell your information than the actual product at which they're collecting the information from. It's kind of like those get rich with my real estate tips and tricks. It's like if that guy was really so rich selling and buying real estate, he'd be doing that, not selling you his idea of doing that. So this is the same sort of thing when it comes to OS because the operating system is a perfect mining utility for information for billions of people at this point. So moving down here, disable transmission of typing information. So that says Windows transfers data of your writing habits. Which data this is specifically and to what extent they are anonymous it is unclear at this point. So basically, they couldn't even figure out exactly what that means, but it's written into the code. It's written into the user agreement too that says that Windows can collect it. Well, guess what, Windows? Fuck you, you're not collecting that anymore. Uh, disable suggestions in the timeline, sure. Disable suggestions at start, sure. Disable tips, tricks, and suggestions when using Windows. That's a pretty self-explanatory one. It's up to you whether or not you find it annoying anytime you turn on Windows um, and you get like in the lock screen and stuff. It's like hint and tip and all that. You can turn that stuff off if you want. Um, 
Disable showing suggested content in the settings app. It's a little less invasive, but uh, disable the possibility of suggesting to finish the setup of the device. Boom. That is one of the most annoying ones in my opinion, because if you don't set up Cortana and you don't set up payment information and let's say you do an offline account, let's say you do the, the little um, command trick that we've showed you guys to make it so you don't have to be connected to the internet or you don't have to log into a Windows account or Microsoft account to make Windows installation finish, you will almost permanently be told, finish setting up your device, right? Whenever, you, it's kind of like the smartphones do the same thing too. Um, it's nice to be able to turn that off and just say, leave us alone, right? So we're gonna turn that off, disable app notifications, and that depends, right? Sometimes they can be really, really annoying. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Disable access to local language for browsers. Okay, that's all pretty self-explanatory. Let's find some of the bigger ones here. Uh, let's see, activity and history clipboard. Disable, disable storage of clipboard history. So anytime you control C or you copy something, it's not just the most recent copy that Windows keeps a history of, it keeps a pretty long history of all your copy pastes or copies. So you can make it so it's no longer uh, storing your, a copy history. Now that might be, you might be thinking like, why is that even important? You know how many people will copy and paste passwords from like different vaults and other password utilities and apps and stuff? That's just another possible source of vulnerability. So I think having the copy paste or the copy clipboard disabled is important. There's no reason for you to, to continue to have a history of it, right? How many, how many of you watching this have ever gone to your clipboard history and recopied something from there? I haven't. For most people, they never ever use it. But if you're like me, some of my passwords are 128 characters long for pretty obvious reasons. I will never ever memorize them. So I'm almost always having to copy those. So it's very important to have that not stored somewhere, I think, if we're talking about security here. Okay, app privacy. This is a pretty big one. I mean, look how big this section is right here. Disable app access to user account information. Now you can see right now, shut up 10, 10, or 10 plus plus is recommending that yes, that be on. This function allows app access to the name and picture you provided for Windows. If you don't want to allow this and deactivate the function. Disable app access to diagnostics information. Sure, disable app access to device location. Probably one of the most important ones to disable unless you're using location-based apps. And one last thing to consider about device location is if you're using, a, if this is on a laptop, or let's say a Windows tablet device or a portable device. Um, if you disable that, it's also gonna disable all of the find my type tracking stuff if it gets stolen or lost. So keep that in mind too. Um, this is an all or nothing type of button. It's not, you can't say let certain apps use it and certain apps not, which I don't know, maybe there's a version of this that can do that. But if you turn that off and then you lose it, you're, you lost it. You gotta find it the old fashioned way. There's no ping in it or suddenly realizing it's you know, in the next city over because you left it at Starbucks and then somebody picked it up and now they have it. So keep that in mind, it is an all or nothing. Um, disable app access to camera. Okay, that's, a, that's one you need to be kind of like diligent about. Let me say, let me say, tell you why. If you are using like browser-based Teams or Google Meets or any of that, it is going to disable access for like your browser and other apps to be able to access your camera. So you don't wanna necessarily disable that if you're gonna be using apps that absolutely need your camera. Now that's not saying like OBS wouldn't be able to access your camera, uh, but it basically is going to have a limited functionality. So that's why it's also limited right here. It says by default apps, e.g. the browser, Edge, Facebook, or Twitter could access the camera on your machine if one exists. Activating camera access can be useful when you want, for example, to make video chats or conferences. Deactivating may result in not being able to transmit video images. So like I said, that can block your camera access to certain apps. Note, this setting depends on devices available in the system, microphone or camera, and only affects if they are present. This setting can still be set and will automatically and will be automatically considered when the device is added later. So what that's saying is if you don't have a device on there now, but you toggle this and you add a device later, this function will still be a controlling the way that new device functions. So I don't, unless you're the kind of person that's like, let's say you're Dale Gribble from the King of the, from King of the Hill and you were absolutely like tinfoil hat wearing and no, I'm gonna put tape over every camera and on my TV and my phone and, and you're just terrified of the idea of having a camera or a microphone, you'd wanna enable this. Like for me, this is for like the uber paranoid but for some people who have no reason to have a microphone or a camera present, that's an important function to have because like I mentioned earlier, we talk about cross promoting and cross advertising among brands. You know as well as I do, your freaking phone and your watch and your Alexa, sorry, I just triggered all your Alexas, uh, Alexa cancel. Um, they're listening and you know they're listening, which is why suddenly you start getting advertisements for things that you've talked about but never searched. 
Quick story, I've talked about wanting a retractable awning in my backyard because it would, it's nice to have sunlight and daylight when we want it, but sometimes it gets very hot here in Southern California in the summertime, so it'd be nice to have a, a retractable awning. I never once searched retractable awnings, but for about a solid week on every single one of my devices, I was getting advertisements for retractable awnings. How do you think they got that? Because the microphones are always listening. So it's unfortunate that there's no whitelist because it would be nice to have a whitelist where you could turn it off by default, but then whitelist the apps that you want to use. Um, yeah, oh, there's one other thing I forgot to mention right here. At the top, you see I have it set to current user. Local machine would apply it to every user on the machine. Current user applies it to that current Windows account. Now, since we only have one account on most of our systems here, that would be kind of the same thing. But if you say you have a shared system and you have kids at, at home that are using their own Windows uh, like logins or Windows profiles on a shared machine, you could do this either locally or for you know each individual user. So I just wanted to point that out. I forgot to mention what that was at the top right there. Um, disable microphone is the same thing we just discussed with camera. Disable access to use voice activation. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now these are, these are obviously listening and watching type of functionality right here. Not necessarily telemetry, but it's ways that it can get access to the information that it wants to sell, right? So disable app access to radio, disable access to messages, disable access to tasks, um, disable access to email call history. So phone calls, notifications, like it, it's pretty, that's why this says limited right here because it has a limited use depending on the, t the way that you use your system. You could, you could theoretically break your system pretty, pretty big uh, for certain apps if you turn all this stuff off and some of these apps need this functionality. Like for instance, if you disable your microphone, there goes TeamSpeak. Wow, does anyone use TeamSpeak anymore? There goes Discord. Yeah, that's the newest TeamSpeak, right? Well, let's move on to Edge now. That's one of the ones that really matters right here. And this is new version based on Chromium. Disable tracking in the web, boom. Disable check for saved payment methods by sites, boom. That's pretty obvious. Disable personalized advertising, search, news, and other services. Definitely don't want that. Disable automatic completion of web address and address bar. I mean, that's gonna be based off of your history or uh, not just your history, but also most commonly visited websites based on the text that you're typing. Uh, so if you were to type www.com, P O, it would probably immediately fill that in as the post office. Anyway, moving on, uh, disable user feedback in toolbar, disable storing and auto completing the credit card data on websites. That's probably one of the stupidest thing you can do is auto save payment information in your OS and such. I mean, I bet that should be pretty self-explanatory. Disable suggestions, uh, disable suggestions from local providers, disable search and website suggestions, disable stopping assistant, Disable the edge bar, disable sidebar, uh, disable Microsoft account sign-in button. I'm not sure what would happen if we did that actually. We, this setting removes the sign-in button in Microsoft Edge. Oh, okay, we can do that. Have you ever like had Edge continue to annoy the shit out of you saying, please log in so we can unify your experience across all of your devices? That is very annoying. I'm so sick of seeing it. And it does it every time Edge updates assuming you're even using Edge, but it does it every time Edge updates and it just becomes very, very intrusive. So you can disable that functionality entirely. So anyway, that's all pretty pretty straightforward. Disable smart screen filter, disable type, type, typo squatting checker for, okay, I'm not even sure what that is. Edge legacy version, same sort of things, but only in, in the legacy. Microsoft Office, um, not gonna use that one for now. Synchronization of Windows settings. Disable synchronization of all settings. This has screwed me so many times in the past where I would have a, a system set up a certain way and then maybe have a laptop set up a different way. And then I'm not being diligent in reading the things that I'm checking sometimes. And every now and then it would ask me like, hey, do you want us to unify your experience across your devices? And then I would accidentally say yes. And then now suddenly all my desktop and my icons and history and say it's favorites and all that is very different from, I have a very different user experience on my laptop versus my desktop. And I don't want that unified. So. I personally would disable synchronization and that you can do that on each level as well. Settings, design, browser, credentials, language, etc. Cortana. Cortana, is Cortana even still in Windowsville? I think it's Copilot now. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But this is probably more of a Windows 10 thing at this point for Cortana. Uh, disable input personalization. Windows AI. Disable Windows Copilot. Disable the Copilot button from the taskbar and disable Windows Copilot plus recall. Boom, boom, boom. 
Uh, let's see. This one was on by default. User behavior, disable the use of diagnostics data for tailor-made user experience. So just installing this, like turn that one on by default. And I love how it's bold because this is kind of like one of the major reasons this program even exists is for this one right here. Microsoft can record diagnostic data from your computer and evaluate it in order to improve your use of Windows. While doing so, a large amount of data uh, a large amount of such data will be compiled and transmitted. Disable this feature if you want to stop this from happening. That's on by default when you turn on, when you, when you run uh, shut up uh, 10 plus plus. So I'm gonna leave that that way. Windows Explorer, disable occasionally showing app suggestions and start menus. Let's see, disable ads in Windows Explorer and OneDrive, boom. Do not show recently opened items in jump lists and start taskbar. Uh, I, I, I kind of like that one. Disable Windows Spotlight, I think that's annoying. Disable fun facts, tips, trips, and more or on your lock screen. Disable notifications on lock screen. Boom, I just let the lock be lock, okay? Uh, mobile devices, disable showing suggestions. Sure, I'm not, I don't use really any mobile. I had a Surface, but I don't really use it anymore. Um, search, disable search with AI and search box. Disable extension of Windows search with Bing. God, that's being so annoying, it's so nice now to Disable the, the Bing search option. And then miscellaneous. Disable feedback reminders. Disable automatic installation of recommended Windows Store apps, please. Disable tips, tricks, and suggestions while using Windows. It's the same thing as what's in the lock uh, screen, only it's just within Windows as well. Disable Windows Media Player Diagnostics and disable the desktop icon information for Windows Spotlight. So here's one thing you need to note right now, and I didn't go over it yet, is many of these functions are gonna say it overrides the traditional method at which you can turn on and off these features. Most of these features can be turned on and off within the control panel or the settings, but Windows is smart, or I should say Microsoft Windows team is smart in that they divide it up and bury it and make it very difficult to find to turn this stuff off, which is why this GUI exists to find it all in one localized spot to turn it on and off. But if you change settings here, this is the only place you can undo the setting or make changes to the setting, and it will tell you that. Like once you do that, it has to be changed here and put back. Now, one way you can do it too, if you needed to, um, I'm gonna do accept changes. I've now accepted all my changes. Okay, so in the actions button here, you have undo all changes, factory settings. It's just gonna put it back to the way it was when you started. That's part of what that system restore point actually is with as well. Um, you can create a system restore point now, once again, if you wanted. Um, but we have these three quick select buttons. So apply, only recommended settings would be the most limited functionality uh, of the software, meaning it's not gonna be as intrusive in the OS. Then you have the recommended and somewhat recommended settings. Those are like part of the limited buttons right here. That's a uh, little more aggressive of a setting. And then obviously apply all settings means toggle everything on. Now that would probably not be a good idea unless you were maybe running an OS that you wanted as locked down as possible. It's in its own digital Faraday cage, nothing gets out. Um, that would also be probably fairly catastrophic for most home users. Like suddenly you can't connect to a Zoom call, you can't connect to a Teams meeting, Google Meet, any of that stuff because everything is kind of being blocked. So that's highly unrecommended. You could toggle it and try it if you wanted, but then you could easily revert if you wanted by going back to uh, either your restore point or just resetting everything and going back to the list again. But this is a very nice power. Oh, and here's the other thing too. File, import settings, and export settings. So let's say you wanted to export this because you made custom changes. You could export that, save it. And then if you ever go through a Windows update, which probably will override a lot of this, then you can just import your settings that you saved and go from there. And then it would update based on uh, any of the updates in the future that Windows might change some of these settings around. OS 10 plus plus can also be updated. O o and o is really good about keeping this utility up to date as Windows updates roll out. Because one of the, window the reason why Windows updates are constantly rolling out is not just to quote unquote make Windows better, it's to undo these types of methods so they can continue collecting data and then these have to be updated to be able to fight back uh, against those in, intrusive methods at which uh, Microsoft is basically using the OS as nothing but a data miner. So there you go, it's free. Uh, it was highly recommended that we show this and that's what we did. So they don't know who we are, we don't know who they are, but we are grateful that they exist. So download it, start messing around with it, and basically tell Microsoft, fuck you, stop stealing our data, it's not okay. Especially if you're paying for the OS. Hell, even if you cracked it, don't give them your data for free. <laughs>